Okay. Today we're going to do a video um, on fixing car stereos. I've already took it apart and I already know what's wrong with it. Um, but I actually, um, before I took it apart, I kind of knew. Basically, I did the biggest mistake a lot of you do, and a lot of you throw your radios away. This is a car stereo, AM, FM, CD, MP3, pretty decent Kenwood. Um, as I was hooking it up as what I call a test environment, um, the positive wire touched the, the metal of the radio here, somewhere on the chassis, and of course it smoked, and normally you'd think that radio is garbage. Now, the first thing you can do if you have exact um, circumstance where a hot touch is the base is you can hook up your wires on your harness normal and then just touch a ground to the to chassis and if you didn't smoke it that bad doing that it should power on but uh, of course you don't want to have to hook your ground up to your regular pigtail and ground your radio to make it work because obviously you know there's something wrong and so I'm not going to go through on how to take your radio apart basically if you're mechanically inclined you should be able to um, pull it apart again. I'm trying out this new dollar store stand guy, so work with me here. But uh, I went ahead and basically pulled it apart. This will work with amps, this will work with um, basically any type of electronic. Um, the first thing to look for in the electrical world is what they call a broken trace. Now let's see if we can get in here to see this. If you look right here, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see that, guys. Uh, let's see if we can zoom it a little bit. Oops. Ah, uh, okay. We're learning this new stand here. Let's see if we can... Right here. Right where the tip of my finger is. You'll see it's burnt. You'll see the burn mark right there where the tip of my thumb is. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and heat the gun up and that will be a part two of this video. And I'll just show you basically up close the best we can how to replace that broken trace. Okay, now we got a little bit better lighting here. And if you look right here you can definitely, definitely see the broken trace. So a few things you're going to need. Some cheap plumber blocks, as you can tell it's plenty of people use. Sorry for the zoom guys, I just some solder. I usually get the lead one. It just heats up better. Soldering pencil. Cheap $5 Walmart special. A utility blade. You're going to want to start by scraping your blade with the razor blade. Take your blade. Dip it in the flux. See a little bit of smoke. Then you get your tip nice and tin. You're going to set your gun on the side for now once it's nice and heated. And you're going to take your razor and you're going to scrape. Okay, this is where it's burnt. As you can see, it's just flaking right off here. Take all the old off. And you want to kind of pay attention to where the two points were supposed to meet. So we got this one here is a good spot. And this right here. So you can run a jumper from here to here. Or if it's not as bad, you can basically put a lump of solder over it. I advise against the lump of solder only because this is really weak. As you see, I just took it right off. Now, when you're scraping this off, you want to be very careful because the whole board can lift. Um, your may vary, but now you see the broken part is completely um, taken out. So we're going to go ahead and scratch. I, I could just do it from this point to this point, but if yours doesn't have a good point to make, we'll go ahead and scratch it show you how you would do it if you don't have a good point. Carefully just scratch the board and wipe it a few times. Make sure you have a good connection on both sides. Okay, so what you're going to do so you don't damage the electronics around, just take your pinky or if you're a clean freak and you don't want to get the flux on you just a little bit of flux on your pinky and put it on the area because what this will do is it'll help the solder stick as well as help the electronics that are around it um, so you see those two silver points those pads you just take your tip put it on there and just let the solder ease a little bit don't need too much guys just enough to make two 
wings. And make sure you let it heat to where it turns like a silver, but don't overheat it. Then what you're going to do is take a piece of ordinary wire, decent thickness. Doesn't have to be too, too thick. This is off of like a transformer. And you're going to dip this whole thing. Oh, we're getting this. This is the new stand, guys. Dip it into the flux. Get it nice and fluxed. Fluck it up. No, I didn't say fuck it up. I said fluck it up. Then what you're going to do is try to get this on the board and be very careful. Do not do this part, guys. Uh, do not set the wire on the board. I'm just putting it on the board to film this. Okay, are we in? Are we in frame here? No, I'm going to slide the board over a little bit, or pull the wire up a little bit. Okay, are we? No, we're not in frame still. Um, just tilt this camera up a little bit, right about. Oops. Sorry, guys. Okay. So you want to put the flux on the end of your wire, and basically this is called tinning. You want to go ahead and tin the wire. Nice and easy. And when you're tinning, nice few strokes back and forth. So when you're done, your wire should look something like that. Nice and silver. And then you just take the wire. Let's get it back in frame on the board here. So you guys can see this really good. This little dollar store uh, sand is working out good. Now you see your flux started to dry a little bit. That's no problem. Take the end of that. Get it up nice and good, but not too much, and hold it still. As you see, my hands are not very steady, and I'm able to do this. You also want to make sure where you jump, if that part doesn't touch it, like if there's another circuit crossing that, you can um, make sure this doesn't touch it. So that's done. Now, you, if you have a pair of toenail clippers, they'll work better. But um, we're going to go ahead and just bend it. Usually that'll work. Once the solder dries. And see now you have your your um oh again I don't know if you're getting this but yeah you have that jump now you need to get the uh, the old solder up which alcohol will usually do the job um, so we'll pause this okay so we are back let me get the zoom back in focus there again um, just some regular 91 oh you're not able to see that 91 percent alcohol works great for cleaning electronics. And a Q-tip, just soak the swab enough, oops, now see, it's sprayed on there, but again, it's alcohol, so it's okay, you don't want to do that if possible, but move it on your cotton swab to get this flux out of here, because this stuff, it, it kind of corrodes a little bit, just clean it up, toothbrush works great if you don't have a Q-tip, or basically, cotton swabs, anything to basically get that extra flux that you had in there. If you notice it's really shiny now, and if you have a um, voltmeter and you want to get really technical with it, you can check the point from there to there to make sure, but I've been doing this stuff for years, so I trust my work. Um, I'm going to get a heat gun and dry this, uh, or a blow dryer, because I made the boo-boo spill in the alcohol, but alcohol is very good for cleaning electronics. And uh, I'll go ahead and do that real quick, actually blowing on it. Now we'll take my shirt and just soak it up a little bit. Spilled quite a bit on there. Thing cool about alcohol, 91% is it, it dries almost instantly. So if you um, spill something on your video game controller or something of that sort, immediately take it apart and get some alcohol and don't buy 50% crap. Doesn't work worth a damn on electronics. So you got that cleaned up. There's your joint, nice and clean. No, not the kind you smoke, guys. Um, so then we can go ahead and start the reassembly. So basically, if you've got some thermal compound, I'd like to put a computer, put it there. But again, this radio is just like a test radio here. So I'm not going to say I blew it on purpose, but it came up perfect time to do this radio. So again, when you take it apart, you're going to want to find basically every screw on the casing. And... Um, you also come in contact with these, these here. These just basically, you take a pair of needle nose pliers and bend them. But, um, and you'll see they're here too. Anytime you see that little blade there, that means 
this little band is holding it in place. Um, they're really easy to take apart once you've done them a few times. You will have a ROM that goes in there. You will also have a metal heat sink like this that goes on the back. So basically we're just going to screw this puppy back together and uh, put it back together and hopefully fixing that, that joint that broken trace on the board it'll uh, work again but a good way like I said to test it is just hook up your connectors here like a normal um, and then touch the ground to this metal if it comes out then more than likely you short it out the ground in there sometimes it works sometimes it won't either it'll come on or it won't but that's uh, a good way to test to see if you got serious damage on your hand this is the this chip here that I just put the heat stick on this is the actual preamp and amplifier that makes it so if you have a car radio and only one channel works 10 out of 1 it's this which it's kind of a bitch to change but it is possible I have done it but I never use the onboard amps I usually use the RCA's I usually clip the wires for the onboard because using the onboard amp in these little radios they claim they're 50 watts you'll never get 50 according to Ohm's law I mean if it's only pulling 10 amps there's no way or 5 amps but that's another whole subject, but yeah, if you want good sounding audio, don't use the onboard. Uh, just cut your speaker ends, clip them, tape them, whatever, and use your RCAs and do bi-amping or tri-amping. You know, you see all these people with systems and they got one amp per base and nothing else. It's like, are you really trying to push all your door speakers off this little chip in there, you see? But yeah. I don't even use car radios anymore. I got a whole computer 5.1 in the car, so I got a bunch of these laying around. Um, but yeah, there's some underneath here that got to be put back. And basically, like I said, if you're mechanically inclined, then you know how to take something apart and put it back together. This job should be really easy. If not, take pictures, uh, make a video yourself, label it, do whatever you got to do. So you can be, uh, for certain, everything's going back together swimmingly. Okay, and these are... I think this one requires the fatter screwdriver I had in the beginning of this video. This guy, yep. I really wish I would have showed you, but I know a lot of you guys probably have thrown radios away because they won't power on or something like that. But this is, again, it, it, I'm not uh, recommending anybody. If it's, a, if it's a radio and it's worth a lot to you, um, pay somebody to fix it. Um, but if it's, you know, you're thinking about buying a new one and throwing it away, or it's been sitting and you've been thinking about getting it fixed, but never got around to it and went out and bought a new one now's your chance to pull it apart and learn a little bit so now we got the face back on there um, next is going to be the ROM which the ROM just has one of these weird little clips and basically you slide this out I'm hoping you guys are getting this if not I'll just send me an email I'll put the email in the link. So that's how that... Oh, nope, I'm showing you guys wrong. Basically, you'll know it's in when you pull on it slightly and it doesn't come out. Damn you, it doesn't want to go in now, does it? I'm trying to get it backwards. Wait a minute. Yeah, I do. Hold on. Oh, that's right. It's just being a butthead, and that's all. Uh, these are kind of hard to get back in. There it is. That piece of hair is going to screw me over. There we go. Okay, and we'll set this back down in there. And there should be two screws. Now's where I'm wishing my screwdriver was magnetically, uh... One of these should be. Ah, that's going to be kind of hard to get that down into there. We'll put it down into here. I need a magnet. That's going to be a... Uh, yeah, it's going to be hard. Cause, oh, it is magnetic. A little bit. Oh, you little booger. Get your ass in there. <laughs> yeah, magnetically shielded my butt. 
All right, there we go. Yes, the screwdriver's bent. You're not imagining. Same thing to the other side there. Oh, see, that's just not very magnetic. It's magnetic, but... Talk about good aim today, that's... Alright, so that's that. Snap the cover on it. Okay. And now let's find the... There's a screw that goes back here, but I'm not putting it in yet. Um, let's put the base plate on there. And that's that. And I got the trim and all that to go on there. So let's go ahead and take it to our. This is my um, my uh, toolbox that has a radio on it. I built this a little box. So basically, when I go out, I can um, take my tools with me. So you know, let's go ahead and try this again. Set it up here. See what happened. Guys, sorry about that. What happened is these two loose wires I have down in here, they're gonna go to a cigarette lighter and they touch the shell of the radio. So let's go ahead and try not to make the same mistake we made the first time. Sorry for the dark video, guys. And if all ends okay, and I flip this switch on, there it is. It's asking for a code. I can let you guys see my code. Do this in case somebody steals the box. It ain't worth shit. Come on. Now this is approved. Okay, so it's in standby. Go ahead and put it back on CD. Make sure the CD's working okay. are good um, but the radio wouldn't power Baby girl, you are that one. hope you enjoyed I deserve that. Deserve that. Yeah, yeah.